Hey, what's up, coin fam? Today we're talking about 20 rare and valuable nickels you want to know about. Whether you're a coin collector, a coin roll hunter, or you just want to know if a nickel in your pocket is worth a lot of money, you'll want to see this video. Let's get right into it so it all makes sense. Here's our first nickel. This is a 1972 Denver minted Jefferson nickel. It was graded mint state 60 on a scale from 1 to 70. This coin was struck slightly off center. You can see some of the letters are cut off in the word trust right here. And there's a little more space near the edge of the nickel right here. The off center strike is more obvious on the reverse of the nickel. You can see more of the lettering cut off down here and the gap to the edge of the coin is way more obvious at the top of the nickel. A mint state 60 isn't impressive, and neither is the 5% off-center strike, but this nickel still sold at auction for $17. Here's a real cool error nickel. This is a 1962 Denver minted nickel. It graded about uncirculated 55 by PCGS grading services. This is what's called a lamination error. Something went wrong with the alloy used on this nickel. You can see where the top layer of the metal is flaking off the coin. There's no evidence of the lamination problem on the reverse of the nickel, but there's virtually no detail on Monticello. This nickel sold at auction for $45. This is a 1977 aluminum nickel. The U.S. Mint does produce coins for other countries or territories at times. This nickel was struck on a planchet for one centimo from the Philippines. It was graded proof 65 deep cameo and brought in almost $4,500. The strike on this nickel is off center so much it almost missed the nickel completely. In fact, the strike is off so much you can't even see the date on this nickel. This Jefferson nickel was graded mint state 65 and the coin was also double struck. This nickel sold at auction for $51. Here's another no-date nickel. This one wasn't struck off center, but there's detail missing because this nickel was minted on the wrong planchet. This is a one-cent planchet that somehow made it onto the press instead of the nickel planchet. Sometimes wrong planchet errors involving pennies are given a color grade like red, red-brown, or brown, but this one didn't. This rare nickel was graded about uncirculated 58 on a scale from 1 to 70 and sold at auction for $60. This is a 1961 proof nickel. You can tell right away it was struck off center. This one is off center about 30%. Because of the direction of the off center strike, you can still see the date on this coin. This nickel brought in over $3,700. Any guesses as to what happened to this nickel right here? Let's flip it over and see what's on the other side. This nickel actually has four sides. I don't know what happened that caused the planchet to split in half, but that's what happened here. The front or obverse and the reverse are both intact, so we know that the planchet was together when the coin was struck. This two-piece nickel sold at auction for $322. Here's a newer nickel. This one is from 2005 and it was minted in Denver. The nickel looks a little rough, and that's partly due to the bag marks and scratches on the plastic slab the coin is in. Despite the scratches, the nickel still graded mint state 66. This is a really cool error called a speared bison error. You can see the line from the E in states and under the belly of the bison. This error is caused by a gouge on the reverse die. Because the gouge is on the die, this error will show up on every single coin the die presses until it's retired. This speared bison nickel sold at auction for $329. Here's a really old nickel. This is a Liberty nickel from 1889. The error on this is easily identified as an off-center strike of about 15%. Some of the detail is missing from the reverse of the nickel at the bottom. This nickel was graded about uncirculated 58 and sold at auction for $493. Take a look at this crazy nickel. This is what an obverse die cap looks like. That means this nickel became stuck to the die like a bottle cap and stayed in place while other planchets were being struck. You can see the evidence of the multiple strikes. This is the back of the coin that was striking other planchet while the nickel was stuck to the die. This nickel graded mint state 65 and sold at auction for $1,500. 
Round planchets are cut from a long flat piece of metal. If the planchet is cut overlapping the cut from another coin or near the edge, part of the planchet may be missing. This is called a clipped planchet. There are multiple types of clipped planchets. This one is a straight clip. This coin graded Mint State 65 by Annex and was sold at auction for $600. Sometimes foreign objects come between a die and a planchet. Sometimes this is an accident and sometimes it's a mint worker creating his or her own work of art. These errors are called struck through errors. If the foreign object is still stuck in the coin, it's called a retained struck through. This nickel has a staple struck into it. There's no sign of the staple from the reverse of the coin. This nickel was graded extremely fine, 45, and sold at auction for $780. Here's a nickel with a huge die break at 4 o'clock on the obverse. But there's only a small mark on the back from the die break. You might be able to tell by the contrast between the design and the field of the coin that this is a proof nickel. This error was graded proof 67 and sold at auction for almost $1,500. Here's another struck through error. This nickel was struck through a cloth. The reverse of the nickel doesn't show any sign at all of the struck through error. Despite the lack of detail on the front of the nickel, this coin still graded a mint state 64 by NGC. This rare struck through error sold at auction for $862. This nickel was struck 40% off center. Because of the strike, the date of the nickel can't be seen, but the nickel was struck between 1942 and 1945. How can we know this? Because of World War II, nickels were minted on a planchet made of 35% copper to conserve nickel and copper that was needed for the war effort. This nickel was graded Mint State 62 and sold at auction for over $1,400. This nickel was struck on a one-cent planchet. Usually when we see this, the coin is a reddish-looking color due to the copper in the planchet. This one actually looks like a nickel planchet, but the planchet is actually steel. Here's what happened. In 1943, the year this nickel was struck, the mint changed the metal they used for pennies from copper and zinc to steel. This was done because the copper was needed for the war. Somehow, the penny planchet was used to strike this nickel. How would you know if you came across this one? The nickel would likely feel different due to the size and weight difference between a penny and a nickel. If you're really into coin collecting or coin roll hunting, you should already have a scale to weigh your coins. If you need a scale for coins, take a look at the link in the description for some reasonably priced scales. A 1943 nickel should weigh about 5 grams. This nickel only weighs 2.9 grams. A steel planchet will also stick to a magnet. This nickel graded Mint State 66 and sold at auction for almost $15,000. Take a look at this 1969S proof nickel. It graded proof 67 and proudly displays a cud from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. A cud is a die break that affects the edge of the coin. Cuds aren't uncommon, and if you look at enough coins, you can find them in circulation. You won't find a cud on a proof coin in circulation, though. Proof coins are made for collectors and can only be found in proof sets. This nickel sold for over $1,700. Here's a nickel you won't find in circulation, but it's so rare for something like this to be created, let alone make it outside of the mint. This nickel was broad struck, overstruck, and was fused together with another nickel by an overlapping strike. This 1995 Philadelphia nickel was graded Mint State 63 by Annex and sold at auction for almost $2,000. Here's a 1968 Jefferson nickel that was minted in San Francisco. This nickel was double struck after it rotated in the collar. Most of the detail is gone because of the additional strike. The back of the nickel shows Monticello forming a cross. Like the X on a treasure map, this nickel was cashed in for over $2,200. This is a 1965 silver nickel. It was struck on a 90% silver dime planchet. We'll never know how this dime planchet made it onto the coin press during nickel production. You can see where the thinner dime planchet ran out of room for the larger nickel at the top and left side of the coin. This nickel graded Mint State 62 and brought in $6,000 at auction. If you want to learn how to identify rare and valuable coins, click on that video to the left. 
Thanks for watching.